Tom Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we have, well, American sports card, classic legend card today. Chip Beck, good to see you. Good to see you. Chip, share with them what your position is with the Ford GT Club. Uh, I am the moderator of the Ford GT Forum that belongs to David Bannister. He lives in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, and uh, I've been involved in that club for the last 15 years. Uh, David is the uh, uh, the biggest gun in the Ford GT world, and, and uh, uh, he asked me to, to help moderate his forum, and uh, that that's what I do. So, you're the president, is that right? No, I'm the, the moderator. moderator. The moderator. Oh. Uh, David Bannister is the owner and, and president, and uh, is moderator. I look, look at the posts and moderate the content uh, to make sure that it's uh, it's appropriate. And, and with that, I just want to show your, your outfit here, which is all Ford, all wonderful. And let me feature number 34. Now, there's a reason, come on alongside me, there's a reason why yours is number 34, to have such a low number. And might I add, the first Ford GT in the valley, as they call it, here in Arizona. And this car, well, everybody knew about the Bumblebee as soon as it came. What's the, uh, I'll stay right here and let people take it in. What's the story? Why is it number 34? My, uh, uh, everybody calls me Chip Beck, but my actual name is Charles Lewis Beck III. My son Charlie is Charles Lewis Beck IV. So 34 is uh, Chip and Charlie, the third and the fourth. And you didn't just happen to run into that number. How did that happen? It's, uh, I, uh, uh, was, was told I was going to get one of the first 50 cars, uh, first 54 GTs that would be built. And I asked Henry Ford III if, uh, if I could have a, uh, my own serial number. And he said, probably not, but what do you want? And I said, number 34. And he said, why? And I told him. And uh, so I was informed a couple weeks later that, that uh, I got it. My car is serial number 00034. Number 34. Now, come on alongside me. So the bumblebee is in the sun. And take a look at those rotors. Wow. Now, Chip, one of the reasons why you have one of the first 50 cars as the moderator is you are quite extensive in your driving of your Ford GT because you did have a 2006 one. And we'll tell that story later in our ride. But um, with this one, and that's an amazing story. But how did you originally get connected to the Ford family, so to speak? How did that happen? When I was a young man, my father, uh, Bud Beck, was general manager of Chase Morsey's Paradise Ford here in Scottsdale, Arizona. He was on the corner of Scottsdale Road and Camelback. Uh, Chase Morsey was an ex-Ford factory executive. He was a good friend of Carol Shelby's, and he sold quite a few new Shelby Cobras that I got to ride in brand new when I was eight and nine years old. Brand new Shelby Cobras when you were eight and nine. Right. I walked into the showroom with my father one day, and they had a burgundy Ford GT on display. This is 1965. Uh, the car wasn't for sale. There was about half a dozen of them that Ford sent around the country and put on display at dealerships. So although I didn't get to ride in it, uh, I did get to sit in it. I thought it was the most beautiful car I'd ever seen and thought someday I'm going to buy a Ford GT. I didn't realize that they only built 134 of those cars originally. Some of them were crashed as race cars and I believe only 30 some odd were street cars. Uh, when I started looking around for one when I got out of college, then I found out how rare they were, and they were three or four hundred thousand dollars back then in the late seventies, early eighties. Those cars are three, four, five million dollar cars today. The most valuable of them, the one that won at Le Mans in sixty eight and sixty nine, is currently worth probably about forty million dollars. Wow. Uh, so that was out of the question. When I heard that Ford was going to recreate it for, for just two years in two thousand five and two thousand six. I decided that if, if possible, I would uh, I would buy one of those. Uh, they said they were going to be 150,000. Uh, when they came out, they were 160, but the dealers were charging 300,000 plus. Uh, but I kept waiting, and the premium kept going down and down and down until near the end of the second year, I was able to buy this car for the list price, which at that time was was 177 thousand dollars. And it's been a good investment because it's never been worth less than I paid for it new. And the same goes for this car. This car was uh, about uh, 550000 new, but it's probably worth double that now as and a used car. And there's a hysterical story that we'll talk in the ride a little bit later of you getting that first Ford GT. It's also in the Bumblebee colors. Come on with me, though. 
all of the beautiful design even in the headlights the air venting here now chip you do one thing in particular that i think is really super cool for kids who this is their dream car you br you bring hot wheels of your car to them do we have a hot wheel in the uh i do i never go to a car show without a bag of hot wheels cars oh i got the wrong wrong key so while you're doing that i'll have no problem that The wing obviously up. There's your trunk compartment. Maybe a Ford Performance bag might I have. And while we're there, the EcoBoost 6. So, so when I go to a car show. I'm going to step on this side. Let me just do this too. Nice. <laughs> I always bring an entire bag of. Uh, Hot Wheels, uh, Mattel made an exact copy of my car, speed yellow with black stripes, and uh, I give them out to all the little kids. I've given away over a thousand of these to kids at car shows all over Arizona. That is so cool. So you collected Hot Wheels, you get them involved in it. I think that is a wonderful piece to your story. Let's take a look at the, uh, let me take a look at the overall back. We'll close that uh, trunk compartment. Do me one favor though. I just noticed that badge right there. And one here. Okay. Oh, that's delightful. There are exhaust vents coming right through the middle of the tail lights that exhaust air from the transmission cooler on one side and the clutch cooler on the other. Chip, say that one more time. In the middle of the tail lights are exhaust vents. On one side, I believe it's for the, the transmission cooler, and on the other side, uh, an exhaust vent for an oil cooler. It comes right through the middle out of that grill. Very cool. There's probably 30 different scoops of exhaust valves all over the car, including eight in the belly van. Really? May I open it? So the gas goes in here. Yes. Close it open. Let me show what that scissor door looks like from the front. Greetings, Earthling. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, if this is the kind of stuff you like. You're committed when you're here. The car. And we'll have Chip when he turns it on. Open that up. And there is number 34. Maybe we'll roll down the window so I can look over your shoulder. Yes. Okay, close that. There we go. So what type of modes do you have here? I see sport, track. It starts with uh, VMAX mode. That lowers the car to two inches off the ground and defeats all the aero and keeps the rear wing down to minimize drag. In VMAX mode, the car will do 216 miles an hour. Wow. Going from VMAX, you switch it up, and if I, if I actually push this button, you can feel the car drop oh, yeah. down. Now, going from VMAX to wet mode, we'll go back up to stock ride height, and this softens the, uh, the power delivery and softens up the transmission shifts uh, for wet conditions. Got it. Going from wet mode into no normal for everyday driving, uh, and you see how the dash changes with each, uh, uh, with each different mode. 
Now it's at stock ride height, the transmission shifts normally. This is where you'd normally just drive the car on the street. For spirited driving, you've got sport mode. This increases the uh, uh, shock stiffness, uh, sharpens the transmission response. Uh, it keeps the turbo spinning all the time, so there's no turbo lag in sport mode. If everything's wound up, uh, for uh, faster driving. So suspension changes, engine changes, transmission changes, and then from there, track mode. In track mode, uh, the wing stays up all the time, and again, it drops down. You gotta push this OK button, uh, I do, and, and back down it goes. Now you see the get dash change again. Now the gear shift is in the middle instead of the uh, miles per hour in the middle. Miles per hour gets shifted over to the, uh, to the left, and um, uh, you got more engine information on the right. So you see gear shift in the middle yep. on, on track mode uh, and in sport mode. <laughs> it just popped But up. in regular mode, it'll turn to miles per hour, miles per hour in the middle, and the gear shift on the right. Let's, uh, let's put it in track for a moment. Does that change the exhaust note? Uh, well, no, stand, no, it doesn't. No, let me it doesn't. stand to the side, so I want to see it drop down. We'll okay. see it drop down, and then we'll, get a, we'll give it a rev. Okay. this thing on the racetrack. I need a little more than that. Okay. Lou's good. <laughs> that was better. Chip, I'm going to leave you right in there. I want to just say uh, we'll take a ride together and we'll keep this uh, this going on. Thanks so much. You betcha. So I'm riding here with Chip and we're in the car. We're in the Ford GT. And uh, you've got a hysterical story about the first Ford GT, your 20, 20, 2005, right? It's a 2006. 2006. So tell, tell them about that story real quick. I had, had never even sat in a Ford GT, uh, but I knew I wanted one. And I'd, I'd worked on uh, uh, trying to find one that I wouldn't have to pay over list price for. Uh, I found the yellow car with black stripes I wanted at Sugarland Ford in Houston, Texas. So I hopped in my little plane and I flew out there uh, to, uh, to go uh, pay for it. Uh, a young lady picked me up at the airport, a young female salesperson, and I'm trying to act real nonchalant like I buy expensive cars like this all the time, right. which wasn't the case, of course. You know, I'm trying to be Joe Cool. And uh, when I walked in the service department, this is the only Ford GT that that dealership was going to get in the entire two years they were making them. And um, so uh, there was about 100 dealership people standing around in the service department uh, looking at the car, and in walks the guy who just bought it, and that's me. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm trying to be real cool. I waved to everybody. I walked over to the car, and... Uh, the gal got in the uh, in the passenger seat, and I got in the driver's seat, and the um, uh, door has a, a big cutout there. I'm sitting up real tall. I waved to the uh, to the people, grabbed the door, and slammed it shut. And I had hair back then, and that guillotine door smashed me in the side of the head. <laughs> It, it, I almost blacked out from the pain and I jerked my head down and it ripped all my hair out that was caught in the seam in the top of the roof. And I, I'm literally seeing stars and the, the sales lady said, oh my God, Mr. Beck, your hair is stuck in the roof. Does that hurt? I said, yes, it hurts. It, it, and so I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I opened the door. I jauntily stepped out driving my forehead into the corner of that door with so much force that it dropped me to my hands and knees. My hair is wafting down from the top edge of the door. She's rushing around the front of the car saying, oh my God, Mr. Beck, are you all right? I look up 
and the dealership general manager has is, is, is got his head in his hands like, oh my God, <laughs> his enthusiasm for letting this out-of-state hotshot drive their only Ford GT had diminished noticeably. Oh my goodness. She's helping me to my feet. She says, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not okay. I said, let's go inside and do the paperwork. I've just had two injury accidents and you haven't even given me the keys yet. <laughs> So I went inside, did the paperwork, and I managed to drive the car around the block without hitting a curb afterwards. Uh, had a transporter pick it up and ship it, shipped it back to Arizona, and I, I, I was able to fly my plane home without crashing it as well. So I had an inauspicious start to Ford GT ownership that ultimately uh, resulted in getting me getting this car. That's great.